Okay, so what is the most difficult part of writing a book? This is a question I get asked more often than I can count. I've been doing a lot of live streams over the last few weeks,、uh, and that's brought in a, an entirely different audience to this channel. And one thing I keep getting asked is, "What is the most difficult part of writing a book?" I think a lot of people are interested in writing. But I think most people, or quite a few people, have met、uh, some pitfalls. Things aren't going as well when they write, and they've shelved their projects because they feel it's too difficult. Now, I believe that in the average household, if you look hard enough, you know, you look in cupboards, drawers, all sorts of places, you'll find an. Unfinished manuscript. I believe. I believe a lot more people want to write than we realize, and they start their projects in the hopes of, you know, having this grand, amazing book, but they never get to actually finish a story. A lot of people have unfinished work, unfinished manuscripts on their laptops as well, and these stories just sit there, collecting dust. Or just taking up space on your hard drive without ever being finished or seen by the public. It's a bit of a curse, really, and it affects quite a few of us. And I've been prone to this sort of thing as well. We all dream of writing that book and having the best reader fandom and the best, you know, the the most amazing fans and people who read every book that we、um, uh, bring out and write. One thing I've always found is it's very easy to start a book. Starting a book is easy because you, when you start a story, you're excited, you're pumped, you're psyched, you're just full of all this energy. You have all these amazing ideas, and then you start to write it, but then you hit a wall somewhere along the line, and you run out of ideas. You run out of inspiration. You don't feel it's good enough. You start to question yourself. You start to doubt yourself, and you wonder, "Who am I to write this book? Who am I to tell a story? Who is going to read my crap?" Trust me, most authors will have had this conversation with themselves, and it takes a lot of willpower and a lot of courage to get over that wall. I think also if you are. You know, you know, working. You have a family. You're in a normal job as well. You, you know, you have the, you have to go on the grind. You are commuting to work on the buses, on the trains. You know, in bad weather, it's cramped. It's not very inspirational. You can also deal with overwhelm, exhaustion. You know, you have a family. You have a job. You have responsibilities. So eventually, for some people. Why would you end up working on a manuscript on this romantic idea when you have all these real-world responsibilities to do, to take on, you know, that are demanding your time and your attention? The hardest part of writing a book is always finishing the book. I I don't care what anyone says; it's definitely finishing the book, especially if you're going for a ninety thousand, eighty thousand word book. That's a substantial amount of words, and I don't think a lot of people realise how difficult it is to write a book. You know, you have to put a lot of your energy, your soul, your time. You know, and you're not getting paid for it because you're not getting paid for this project, and you don't know if you're ever going to get paid for it. Because even though you might be on a contract of some sort, your company might turn around and say, "Oh, we don't like this; it won't sell." Oh, we don't like it. We can't find buyers for it. This will be a hard sell, and that's why you know you have to write for the for the love of writing first of all, because it's way trickier and it's much more、um, challenging to write for profit, unless you're already on a contract of some sort, where you know your the publishing company that you're con- that you're contracted to is going to pay you. To write those books, you know, 
writing is an emotional roller coaster. First of all, you have the isolation of it all. You're doing a lot of work on your own. You know, it's really difficult to share your ideas with people. It's really difficult to have people understand why you're squirreled away in a home for um, several hours a day. If you're a mother or a father, you have kids, you have responsibilities, you have to tend to your kids. If you're a single parent, you have to tend to your kids. So that takes away all your writing time or all any alone time you might have. You know, you have, even when you write and you can go into the world of your characters, you eventually form some, some sort of a relationship and bond with the characters. And it gets to the point where you start to treat them like real world people, like people you know in reality, because you're spending all your time with these people. So it's, a, it, 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 it's almost like an intense emotional affair. People really underestimate how intense it can be. Uh, when I wrote one of my series, uh, I wouldn't say which one, one of my characters, uh, something quite unfortunate happened. And that set me off for a few days. Even though I wrote the character, I knew how it was, it was going to end. And that set me up. That upset me. I was in a bit of a low. So you form a very intense emotional bond with your characters. And then if you're spending a lot of your time alone writing, friends, family, people around you may not understand why. Some people see it as you being antisocial. Are you anxious? Do you have issues? Is there something wrong with you? You're a man, why are you spending so much time on your own? Go out, meet people. You're a woman, why are you spending so much time on your own? You should be married. These are real life conversations I've had with people where I've, you know, I've been on my own for quite a few weeks, not really uh, going out, I'm just probably going food shopping or having my food shopping delivered. So the only interaction I've had with people or society is just taking my dogs out for a walk and that's it. And even then, I don't really speak to anyone. The people find that very odd and that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with people who spend a lot of time on their own. So it's a very, you're very isolated, you're very alone a lot of the time and you're very alone with your thoughts. And then obviously if you're working, like I said before, uh, you're doing all these different things, maybe you have a demanding job or you have a creative side at the same time, you're having to balance all these. Sorry, my video cut off there. So you're having to balance all these insanely difficult responsibilities and then you have to write as well and then you have to do all this stuff in your daily life or things that require your energy, your mortgage payments, your bills, your debts, uh, family, birthdays, uh, your brother's wedding and all the drama around that. And then you have to come back home and write. It, t it takes a lot of energy to write as well and I think we don't really comprehend how much energy and concentration and and I think to write you actually have to switch off and you have to be very relaxed and when you've worked all day you've you know you've been at work you've been in a very unstimulating environment how do you get the stimulation and the inspiration when you get home when you're exhausted you just want quiet, you just want to sit on your own and stare at a blank wall. That's, you know, you have to find that energy somehow. So eventually, with all this stuff going on, the writing gets pushed to the back burner. And eventually, all these manuscripts and amazing ideas and amazing stories just get pushed, you know, they just get pushed aside until 20 years later or 30 years later, you finally try to give it a go and filled with regrets and memories and regrets. And I think I've spoken to quite a few people now who are older who regret not writing or exploring that creative side to them because they start to wonder what could have been, what they could have become, what could have become of their lives, you know. Creativity is therapy. Writing is therapy. It's not just about making the money. First of all, you see it as an enjoyment, as a passion, and as therapy, you know. Dog is sniffing at my door. Oh, dear. So, obviously, 
what I'm trying to say is so many things are difficult in life. We have so many difficulties. We have so many challenges. But what we've learned and what we should learn as human beings is you forge on, you, you, you carry on. You carry on with what you're passionate about, whether it's painting, drawing, sketches, bird watching, writing, whatever you're passionate about, you carry on because that is what will be with you until the day you die, you know? And that will be a comfort in difficult times as well. Writing, like anything else, it requires a lot of discipline. You need to set aside time to write and have a cosy corner or even a little part of your kitchen where you know you can sit down uninterrupted for 10, 15 minutes, maybe an hour if you're lucky, a day, and just write. And I tell you what, if you can start with five minutes, move on to 10, 15 minutes and just gradually build up, you can, you'll be able to write books, you'll be able to finish stories, and you'll be able to create worlds. But you need to have that consistency. If that consistency isn't there, forget it. You need to be consistent or else you're going to be starting and stopping and starting and stopping over the course of several years. I would say the best thing to do is try getting support. So you can join a Write With Me session. Lots of authors live stream on uh, YouTube. I live stream as well. You can start a writing group where you all meet in a cafe once a week, a cozy cafe, cozy corner, have coffees and just write for an hour. I mean, if you're buying coffees anyway, the cafe owner is not going to mind. You can also start social media, set up writing challenges where the challenge today is to write 500 words. I mean, try and keep it realistic for people who have demanding jobs. The challenge tomorrow is to write 500 words or maybe 200 words a day, what, whatever it is. But what you find is when you set that challenge of that, that certain word count, you always o o overdo it. And for many, for several days in a row, you will overdo that word count, which is fantastic because you're going over your original goal. I would also say think about joining uh, efforts like uh, NaNoWriMo. That's a national November writing month. I've never actually done it, but I know many authors who have, and it's helped them finish books because for the month of November, you just write every day and you join that challenge. And I'm sure there'll be other authors, other writers who will be setting up different challenges online. Just join them. What, what's the worst thing that could happen? At least, you know, you could get stories down, you could get a new business idea, you could get, you could, you could be the next bestseller. Who knows what could happen next? And I think most importantly, you would be entertaining people with so much of your work. And that is something that we don't uh, think about as much, the entertainment factor of it, because you are helping people escape. You are helping them escape whatever is going wrong. And you, for several hours or minutes of the day, and they can just tune into you and they can watch your storytelling. Also, the fact that NaNoWriMo exists in the first place highlights the fact even more that uh, finishing the book is the hardest part of writing a book. Because I'm guessing NaNoWriMo exist, uh, came into being because so many authors and people had uh, unfinished manuscripts at home, gathering dust in their drawers. For me, it's most important to say, don't give up on your creative dreams. So many of us do that. So many of us feel like it's not important enough. It's, you know, it doesn't pay the bills. It's not important. Um, it's not helping us with our, you know, make it's not helping make our lives e easier. So it's not important. That is no way to think about creativity. Creativity will carry you through the darkest times of your life. If you have a manuscript languishing somewhere, pick it up, dust it off, start writing again. If you have a hard, a file on your computer that you've been avoiding for a while, click on it, open it up, just begin. Put some music on, music that just helps you concentrate, block out all the outside noise, all that chaos and noise and just block it all out and just write. The more you ignore, the more you ignore that piece of work, I think the greater the pull is because you start to feel like something is missing because you're ignoring, you're spending, you're, you've put so much effort into ignoring it and you're ignoring a piece of yourself 
that is really, really important and that you need to nourish. No one will ever judge you for not finishing it. Overwhelm is a real thing and it's a very important thing and we all suffer from overwhelm. No one will ever judge you. That's just part of life. Finishing a 70,000, 80,000, 90,000 word is, I would say, pretty courageous. It takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of discipline. And if you think about it, most authors don't know if their books will get anywhere. But you don't know until you try. And to keep writing with no idea of what's on the other side is brave, but I think the people who succeed are the ones who start and continue without any idea of what's on the other side. But you have to love writing, you have to love being alone with words, you have to love the isolation of it all. And I think that you have to love words and vocabulary in whatever language, most of all. You just have to love it all because it's very isolating. It can be depressing a lot of the times, but it's very, very worth it. Finishing a book, once you've finished it, and, you know, that is the greatest achievement ever. Love you. Bye.